All right, everyone is talking about Cubase 12. And yes, I went ahead and purchased Cubase 12, the upgrade. One thing I like about how Cubase does this Steinberg, they they let you continue to run the earlier versions as well. So you don't lose anything. So in this video, I'm sure you're wondering, <laughs> Can I control this with X32? Is it the same? Is it different? Well, let's take a look. So I'm going to open up this 32 track session that I'm using to kind of tweak things and find out things. And um, here's the mixer. Nothing different there. And so if I go to the faders, you'll see I still have control over the faders. And then on the X32, the channel that you select on X32, you got fader controls, okay? This thing is a lot difficult. It's easier, but it's a lot difficult because I guess I have to learn the new way of doing things and the mute works, okay? So the mute works. A um, couple of other things. What else? I think I got the transport to work. So you see at the top it is playing. I got record to work. Um, what is this? And I got the cycle to work. There are some things I had to do on the X32 as well. But this is a work in progress. Um, it's a lot different. I will say that. It's a lot different. And I got the... I got some of the um, things working in terms of the track you're on. You can see on the, on the left-hand side, I, it, it wants to do the faders. I think I'm still programming the, um, programming the buttons and things. It's a lot different. Now, I'm going to show you. It, it will not use the XML template that I've already created. So, yeah, I have to start all over with this particular version and do um, something totally different and something new. Um, let's see what channel am I on. Let's go to channel one. Okay, for those who wanted to know about the pan, the pan will go to zero. I mean center now. Before it wouldn't go to center. Um, but also on the Behringer, I noticed it's off by minus two. So I noticed some, there's some calibration settings in there. <laughs> like I say, it's a work in progress. So I've selected channel one, and I guess I should have did that over here. There's a few little things that's just going to take me some time to work out. Um, everything is not what I would hope. Oh, this is all wrong. Hope that it will be, but it's doable. I think we're going to have a solution soon but it is very very different okay so i got i don't know if i got it to work where the selected channel okay yeah but that's two and i'm this is still using the matrix sliders to control sins. I'm using the matrix slider to control these sins over here. I have yet to program the mute button to turn those on and off though. And I'm having issues with selected tracks. So like if I go here, see it's not, uh, well, let's see. Yeah, see, well, Okay, maybe I got that fixed. I don't know. 
So let's move him here. So if I go back over here, max that out, go over here. Okay, yes, it looks like it's following it. There's a lot I got to do, but down here at the MIDI remote, you got to build this. You got to build this whole thing out. And then after you build it, oh my God, there's so much you got to learn in terms of programming everything. Um, but you, you basically you program it by selecting, let's see, let's go over here. I'm going to go to edit. Edit's going to bring this up. When this comes up, all you're going to have is a blank canvas and this red dot right here or square or whatever. And so the way this works is if say like I select a fader right here. All right. So I put it there. When I move a fader, let me select a fader. It is supposed to pick up on that fader. Let's see that jumped to there because I already got a program. Let me go here. I'm going to put a new fader. What haven't I used? Oh, I haven't done these yet. All right, so let's say uh, um, this is channel 17. No, that's, yeah, that's already programmed. Ugh. All right, let me get, um, let's get one of these effects things. Okay, so I choose the fade over here, and you click over here on the red, and then you move a correspond corresponding fader. And now um, that fader is placed here. And it also makes room for another fader. Oh, I guess I got two. This is these two are gang together. And then when you come out of this mode, you'll see you got those faders right there. Then you have to go over to the mixer and you have to assign. Let's say I assign this. So you right click it. They're doing what Studio One does. You right click on it and then it says pick a MIDI, a MIDI remote map. And when I did that, this window popped up and it's real tiny, but you can make it big and you can stretch it out. Okay. And then you select that. Then once you do that, I believe it then becomes then it becomes, um, if I exit out of that, then over here on the MIDI remote, they show. Oh, yeah. The other thing, too, is when you do these, you got to stretch them out to make them long. So it's, it's real tedious, I will say that. This is real tedious. Um, it's going to take some time for me to sit here and put a template together, but I am working on one. Okay, so now that I've done that, see, it's got a longer throw. So you actually build the mixer. The other problem I'm seeing is there seems to be some type of feedback on this. And so some of the knobs and things act stupid. Like I cannot explain it, but they do. Um, so I just wanted to show you guys that I am working on it. I know I'm working on it. Right now, it's, the, it's working basically. It can send back. I can control the X32 from Cubase. But there seems to be some f uh, feedback loop going on that I got to figure out how to get rid of. That's um, that's a part of this. But I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like. It, it is a lot of work. I had to actually build all of this. And I'm trying to build and lay it out where the top row is the first 16 and the bottom row is the second 16. I'm still programming. These right here are to, are to represent the matrix faders 
That's what they are supposed to represent. So the effect sends uh, one through seven because on the matrix, one of the channels is not, well, I don't know why they did that, but one of the channels is not being used. And these are supposed to represent turning on that send when I get done. It's got a knob on there. It's not supposed to be a knob. It's supposed to be a, a button, but it won't come up. Again, the, the, these work. Uh, the left and right indicators, they work. Locators, I should say. Jumping back and forth, they work. I'm trying to work do the return to zero. The play works. The record works. And cycle works. And arm in the channel. It works. Also, this is what was this? Oh, this I gotta find I gotta figure this out. This is the one where you can scroll through the channels. And as you can see, I don't even have the um, Cubase sending MIDI back out, but you see what it's doing. It's bouncing around, and the, 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 the LEDs on the pot are doing the same thing, so I don't know what's going on there. This was the control room volume. This was the metronome, metronome volume, and this was turn the metronome on and off. And that's on... Set B. Set C was our, what do you call it, Q sends. And as you see, they're jumping around. I don't, that's due to, um, I don't know what's causing that. Because I'm not even sending the MIDI back. And I also have the MIDI return inside of the Behringer. I have it turned off, the MIDI receive. I'm only transmitting, but I'm still getting these. They're jumping around like this, which is weird. So for those of you that may be curious as to whether or not I'm building this out, I am. It's just going to take some time. In the meantime, in between time, I will be going over some of the things that I like in version 12, Cubase 12. All right, guys, got to go. Got things I got to do. Talk to you later.